histology, connective tissue. If the cells in our body can be compared to the actors in a movie, then connective tissue can be compared to the crew working behind the scenes to ensure a smooth flow of events. Without it, our cells would be like actors without a stage, confused and unable to perform. Join us now as we roll the cameras and learn more about the connective tissue. A light, easy comedy is what we can call loose connective tissue. Although it supports the organs it surrounds, it is flexible and pliable. On the other hand, dense connective tissue is like a high-intensity action movie. It is strong, provides better protection, and has tightly packed fibers that offer durability. Adipose tissue comprises fat cells that provide a cushioning effect, provide shape, and also store energy. These cells play so many different roles, much like a movie filled with drama. Cartilage is like a beautiful old school romance. It is smooth and flexible, allowing for movement and shock absorption between the bones. Bone can be compared to a classic adventure, providing a rigid and strong system to support and protect the body's vital organs and soft tissue. And lastly, blood and lymph, a thriller that keeps you on the edge of your seat with its constantly moving structure and fluidity that transports oxygen, nutrients and cells throughout the body. Just like how the different genres of movies appeal to different audiences, the connective tissue in the body serves different purposes in its own unique way. In humans and other animals, there are four main tissues in the body. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue and nervous tissue. In this session, we will discuss the components that are common to all types of connective tissue and then classify them. But first, let's attempt this quiz to learn more about the differences between epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Pop quiz In the broadest sense, connective tissue is of two types, general and specialized connective tissue. Bone, cartilage, blood and lymph have very specific functions and hence come under the category of specialized connective tissue, which we will discuss in the subsequent sessions. General connective tissue is also called connective tissue proper which is a broad category of connective tissue that includes a variety of subsets like loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, reticular tissue and adipose tissue. All types of connective tissue have a similar composition but in different proportions. The two main components are the extracellular matrix which is made up of ground substance and fibers and cells. Let us now talk about the extracellular matrix. The ground substance is a gel-like substance that surrounds the cells and provides a medium for nutrient exchange, especially between the blood and surrounding cells. 
The primary component of the ground substance is water, along with proteins and carbohydrate complexes, and these are secreted by cells called fibroblasts, which we will learn about in just a little bit. The next component of the extracellular matrix is the fibers. The different types are collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers, each with its unique functions. Collagen fibers are the most abundant fibers in the extracellular matrix and provide strength and support to the tissue. They are composed of the protein collagen, which is the most abundant protein in the human body. Collagen fibers provide tensile strength and stability to tissues allowing them to resist stretching and deformation. Under the microscope, collagen fibers can be visualized using various staining techniques. For example, Mason's trichome stain can selectively stain collagen fibers blue-green, making them easily visible under a microscope. Other staining techniques include the Van Giesen method, which stains them pink, and the silver impregnation method, which stains them brown. Collagen fibers can also be seen using special techniques, such as polarized light microscopy, which highlights the characteristic birefringence of collagen fibers. What is birefringence? When polarized light shines on the collagen fibers, the light splits into two beams that are refracted in different directions. This phenomenon is called birefringence and indicates that collagen fibers are made up of multiple smaller fibrils. There are different types of collagen fibers. Type 1 fibers are the most abundant type and are found in tendons, ligaments, fascia, aponeuroses, skin, and meninges. Type 2 fibers are mainly seen in cartilage. Type 3 fibers form reticular fibers. Type 4 fibers are found in the basement membrane. Under the microscope, collagen fibers appear as long, thin, wavy fibers that are oriented in various directions depending on the tissue type. For example, in tendons and ligaments, collagen fibers are highly organized and parallel, giving these tissues their strength and flexibility. In other tissues, such as skin and cartilage, collagen fibers are arranged in a more random pattern. Collagen can transform into a whole different substance when heated. That's right. When collagen is heated, it undergoes a process called hydrolysis, where it is broken down into smaller fragments known as gelatin peptides. These peptides can then combine to form gelatin, which is a gel-like substance with a wide range of applications. You might be wondering, what is hydrolysis exactly? Well, it's a chemical reaction that involves the addition of water molecules to break down larger molecules into smaller parts. In the case of collagen, hydrolysis breaks down the long protein chains into smaller, more manageable pieces. The hydrolysis of collagen into gelatin can occur naturally when cooking certain foods, such as meat or bones in water. But gelatin can also be commercially produced for various uses in foods, pharmaceuticals, and cosmetics. It can form gels, thicken liquids, and provide a smooth texture in foods. Therefore, it is used in desserts and candies. But don't fret, all you animal lovers. Of course, they are vegetarian, vegan, and cruelty free alternatives. The vegan alternative to gelatin is typically made from plant-based sources such as agar-agar, carrageenan, or pectin. 
these substances can be used as gelling agents in place of gelatin in a variety of food and cosmetic products. Moving on to the next essential fiber of connective tissue, the elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are flexible and incredibly resilient. They are made up of a protein called elastin, which allows them to stretch and snap back into place. So where can you find these amazing elastic fibers? Well, they are most commonly found in tissues that need to be able to stretch and recoil like your skin, lungs and blood vessels. But here's the thing about elastic fibers. They are not just stretchy, they are also tough. They can withstand a lot of wear and tear without breaking down. Elastic fibers need different staining techniques like Orsine and Verhoff's method. Normally, elastic fibers do not show properties of birefringence like collagen fibers do, unless they are stretched. While collagen fibers are highly affected by heat, elastic fibers remain unaffected by it. Elastic fibers are produced by fibroblasts. However, in some cases, like in the tunica media of large arteries, they are formed by smooth muscle fibers. So next time you're bouncing on a trampoline or doing a backflip, thank your elastic fibers for their hard work keeping you flexible and springy. Lastly, we have the reticular fibers, which are thin and branching, forming a mesh-like network. They help trap and filter out harmful substances that could be floating around in your body's fluids. These fibers are found in a special type of connective tissue called reticular tissue which is found in organs like your liver, spleen and lymph nodes. But reticular fibers aren't just passive filters. They are also actively involved in supporting your body's immune system. They provide a framework for immune cells to move around and do their jobs. Interestingly, reticular fibers are made up of a protein called reticulin which is similar to the protein collagen found in other connective tissues. But while collagen is strong and sturdy, reticulin is more delicate and flexible. That's a wrap. We've studied the extracellular components of the connective tissue. In the following session, we will learn more about the cells. We hope you had fun learning with us.